because we can learn something from all teachings. No matter what it is, we have something in there we can take away. I need everybody to be muted. So what we're going to do, as I always do, when you come in and they start coming in and they're going to present, we always do it. This is the way I always work. Once you come in last, the last go first and the first go last. So we do know that um, Brother Devin was one of the first ones. He was the first one came up. So he's going last. So how are we going to do it? Now we do have, I want to see, we have um, Brother Nick. He's going, to, he's going to go through here. He's going to go through his presentation. He wrote his on paper. We're going to present that. And he's going to explain it. I will ask you questions if we need clarification or sometimes what I also do, I also check to make sure that this was not done by parents. So some questions might come and they might come very odd. So what we're going to do, we're going to do first up, I do have Nick and we want to welcome everybody as brother Nick to where we're going to see and we're going to look at this and we want to understand what, he, what, what he's saying to where we can get the understanding. So we still need everybody to make sure they have their Bibles to what we can go through and understand what's happening. I'm getting ready to pull my Bible up because everybody has to have their Bible up to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So let me get my Bible up to where I can make sure I can follow him and give him a little bit of time. And let me get my Bible up. My Bible is up and let me get set right now because we're going to start at 1 Corinthians. 10.3. So let me get over there first. And we're going to let him. So what I'm getting ready to do now, Brother Nick, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to pull yours up, put yours up on the screen, and I'm going to give you the floor. And I need everybody. Everybody's muted. You're up. And I want to welcome everybody to welcome um, Brother Nick to where he's going to explain to us what, what is meat. So, Brother Nick, if you can go ahead, uh, you had the floor. First so, 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 so here we have um, what is meat? So we all it says and and all did eat that same spiritual meat. So here you explaining what part of it? What? Yeah, so here you explaining what part of it? Is this explaining carnal meat or is this explaining the carnal side of meat? The which one? Okay, so with the spiritual meat, so what is that spiritual meat? Okay. So, 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 so he, so here, it's saying the Most High as spiritual meat. Okay. Huh? Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at this and see what's going on. So so like with this spiritual meat here, it's uh the laws of the spiritual meat. Now, what made you go to first Corinthians ten three first? Okay. Yeah. So 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 here, what we're gonna understand, and then you have um, because we're gonna we're gonna tie all this in. But what I'm trying to do, I'm looking at uh, where you have Exodus. 20 and i'm trying to see it says uh who moses gave and moses and moses gave uh 
to our people, but the laws of the Most High. So you doing on the more, more trying to do a spiritual side and see why so our people will live <coughs> uh, live the way He wants us to. So with the spiritual meat, is is you saying more so this is a spiritual feed. And, and now the only part we have to watch. I'm gonna show you something in 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 this in in uh, First Corinthians. We're gonna still look at First Corinthians, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you where it gets where it gets real dangerous and real hairy in here. So if everybody look at First Corinthians ten three, it says, "And all did eat that same spiritual meat." The dangerous part about this is what he's talking about what happened because here when they all ate that same spiritual meat that's talking about the manna that came down and that's the spiritual what he was trying to get us to see was the spiritual side on what was coming down because as soon as he said they say ate that same spiritual meat he was talking about the manna that was being rained down to which they was eating every day and then on the sabbath day no, no, no man of rain down. So this, is, so this is a spiritual way you can see it. We're just saying the same spiritual meat mean just you know, but he was he, as he was feeding them this, he was showing them on the Sabbath day they have to rest. That's what he was mainly trying to force and go out. That's what that's what he was trying to make sure we understood. And then when you look at the other part of the spiritual side. And you'll see in other areas, it'll start talking about meat. The spiritual meat to where we are start understanding it's just talking about it's talking about the laws and everything else. So even though that this is a good explanation, we still need to understand exactly what meat is. So so if you ask so if a friend of yours asks you what is meat, this 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 scripture here would not be a good scripture to run them to. To make them make sure that they understand, because now you're going to have, have start having to explain a lot of the scriptures to make them understand what meat is. We want to make sure they know exactly what meat is. So once we go through it, it won't be no, it won't be no, no uh, explanations needed as you see in the scriptures. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna come back because I hear a lot of background noise on yours. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come back to you. But what we're gonna do? Uh, let me see. Uh, one second. One second. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I need you muted. I need everybody muted. Yeah. This is yeah. I need everybody muted. Okay. Yeah, so everybody muted. Parents, make sure your kids are muted. Okay. So, so what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna go to the next one. We have um, Kinesia. And she goes by Kiki. I'm getting ready to pull hers up. One second. She actually has a presentation which she's going to show us. And what I'm going to do, um, who, wait a minute, it's somebody else is staying unmuted. I need everybody muted. The only one I'm going to want to unmute is the one person. One second. One second. I do not see. It's Sister Cheryl. Yeah, Sister Cheryl, I need you to stay muted. Yeah, I need you to stay muted. Okay, uh, what I'm gonna do. And 
Let me get this here, one second. Okay, I got that. And what I'm gonna do, see I could, if I run it, if I run it in the PowerPoint format, it'll actually make it to where I can't, where I can't see what's going on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to uh, have Sister Kinesia, Sister Kiki, I need you to unmute. And what we're gonna do, I still could probably run it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna see if I can still run it. Let me see. We can still run it. Heather, she still has it on her on her phone on her PowerPoint. No, 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 no. Because I'm gonna run it. So this, this okay. Me, me and her good. We good. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm trying to see. What screen do y'all see? It's me, Kanisha Pedro. Okay, that's the one I want you to be on. Okay. So, yeah, so only Kanisha, oh, she'll be the only one on mic. So, Kiki, so right now, the floor is yours. So I'm, I want to listen. I might stop you here and there, but I do want to hear your presentation. So I can go through your entire presentation, and then I can ask you questions later, or we can go through it as we go. How do you want me? You want me to go through your entire presentation, then then if I have any questions, I can ask you later. Uh, you can do that. Okay, we'll do it that way. So right now, the floor is yours. Let me read. Uh, you want me to read the slides or? Yeah, you're going to, yeah, this is your slide. It's not my slides. These, these are your slides, so you you have to explain this for me. Okay. The first slide says, meat on a carnal level defined as nourishment for the body. Getting to the core of a story, or you can chew meat and spit out the bones, meaning you just want the main parts for nourishment. Wait, 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 one second, let me just, do you want it on this page? Or the you, next slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and my thing is, just tell me when you want the slide to change. Just say, hey, move the slide, and, and I'm good. So, okay. So, can you start over again? I'm sorry. Okay. Getting to the core of the story. Or you can chew the meat and spit out the bones, meaning you just want the main parts the nourishment. Okay. Um, the next slide, please. Celestial so definition is as following nourishment on the ministry of the whole doctor. Um, next slide. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Okay. Um, next slide. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, in which the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, there shall be meat. Next slide. On the other side, of the flames, not wasted, not the flesh of the corruptible living things, though they walk through them, neither melted, 
they, the icy kind of heavenly meat that was a nature apt to milk. Next slide. But afterward, they saw a new generation of following when being left with their appetite, they act delicate meals. Last slide. The new generation, us, will leave Israel black people that have been scattered across the four corners of the earth. Our rightful throne, the very nourish nutrition doctrine. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's all the slides. So, can we see what we're going to do? We're going to go back. I do thank you for your presentation. You're welcome. And, and what I want to do, look at the carnal terms. And I'm going to tell you what I do like what you did, you did do. Because thank you. carnal terms, this is what people believe me is. And meat, verse in the Bible, meat is talking about bread. So, here, you did this beautifully, and then another thing which you could have did on the next page, you could have showed to which the showing verse in the Bible, the Bible shows meat as bread. So clearly, this is the carnal side of meat, which is the nourishment. Okay. And then we have here, where we have celestial, the definition in the following nourishment is of a, is a ministry of the whole doctrine. Now, when you do this, we don't never want to tell people what it is and just give them what we think. You need some verses to back that up. Okay. That's your key. Because here, I can easily come at you and then I can challenge you. But if I'm a friend of you, I can constantly just challenge you. Challenge you. Because all you know, you're giving me what you believe the definition is. You're not, you're not letting the word speak for you. You got to always let the word speak for you to where you can give these definitions. Because here, here, right when you put celestial definition, and there's no verse backing it up, that's what opens you up. Okay. Opens you up to where people can come at you. That's what you don't want. We're going to look at here. We got this old bubblehead guy here. And uh, on there, and, and uh, I appreciate it. But then it's saying, um, now it's saying, holding the head, and then the of the whole body and joints and bands together and nourishment meet ministers and knit together. Now, the same thing is, is what it's doing. Where you, where, you, where you pulling everything in is where you kind of honing in on everything. This here, you always want to back that up with at least two scriptures. Mm -hmm. Always. You're going to back it up. Always okay. two scriptures. And, and, and also, too, see, I see... Uh, you got to do a lot of visuals, which is extremely good. And that's where I need to really see, because I'm so into doctrine, a lot of times I forget to do that. So, you know, I know a lot of you guys watch me, but I do apologize. And the reason I apologize, because I don't do this a lot. But this, when you get visuals, you get better understanding. So I do know that, and I do notice, well, pretty much all, 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 the, all the young adults have done this already. And you get understanding a lot better. So you guys did very well there. Because actually, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much all of them did it. And you can kind of get it because you can get a visual. But then here, uh, this one here, Genesis 129, I would have used that one first. Okay. You would have nailed, you would have nailed some stuff down as the way you had your presentation set up. This the one you would have set it up in. Because this, this one telling you, and I'm gonna ask you the question, is this telling you celestial or, or is this a carnal? Um, I think this is carnal. No, see that's celestial. That's why I said I would have used that one first. Because it, it's telling you right here. It's telling you right here. It says, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth in every tree, which which is a fruit of the tree, yielding seed, and it and it should to you it should be for me. And then I love the part you put nourishment, you making sure, and that's what I did love as I went through your entire presentation. 
as I'm as I'm looking at where you're giving it, you making sure you making sure we understand this is nourishment. This is nourishment. So we have some that gonna be nourishment of the flesh. We got some gonna be nourishment of the spirit. Beautifully done. So I don't know. Thank you. Now, now, did you put that in there, or did you have someone help you tell you to put that in there? Um, my mama helped me with a little bit of it, but I did. So yeah, but 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 who made the suggestion of putting nourishment in there? Um, myself. Yeah, smart. See, because what you're doing, I can go back, and you see right here. See, you got nourishment here. You see mm -hmm. nourishment. You starting off. You starting off clearly with nourishment. So that's what you pounding. See this. See this is this was your focal point in that you're using, and it's pounding it into us. Letting you know this is nourishment. It's clear. So anywhere I go, and now I'm looking at meat, I'm knowing one is nourishment. Either gonna feed me, feed me spiritually, or gonna feed 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 me fleshly. It's gonna be the one or two. It's nourishment. Smart move. But then when you do this, that's how you hone into it. But everywhere where you did this, you made sure we knew what it was. That was a smart move. I, so I get a lot of credit for that. And, and uh, let's go to this, Wisdom of Solomon. Now, this is the one we're trying to understand. So the same thing. It says, uh, icy kinds of heavenly meat. See, again, you went right to nourishment. You So you honed in on this, which is good. Now, this one here, I always need a couple other verses to actually prove what it's saying. The reason why, because Solomon is a heavy dude. And he, and he speaks, majority of the time, he speaks, in a in a spiritual way, which he's gonna start speaking parabolically. Many times, this is all he does. That's why it says on the it says, "In the other side, flames wasted not the flesh of the corruptible living thing." See right there, he just flipped the script on everybody. Most people are not gonna understand what's going on. Now, what you got here, I completely understand why you got it here. But a lot of people are not gonna understand it. So that's why sometimes. It's good to use other verses to back this up, or sometimes with the wisdom of Solomon, if he's talking completely spiritually, and say if you want to present this before some of your, your friends, I wouldn't even use Solomon, because they're not going to get Solomon, especially if they're new to it. Because it's saying neither melt in the icy kinds of heavenly meat, that done threw them all, that done threw them all together. Even though you got nourishment there, but they're going to try, but you're going to have to explain yourself to why it's there. And it says nature apt to melt. See, all that, they don't, they're not going to get none of that. I completely get why you got it there. So, you know, and now with this one here, me personally, I would use this. But the only thing is, you have to use a couple other verses to back yourself up. Couple more verses into it. Yeah, you had to put a couple other verses. You have to use some precepts to explain that. Because okay. the first thing is because what happened, people gonna they're gonna look at flames wasted, not not the flesh. Not only not gonna get that, uh corruptible living things, they should get it, but they not. See, corruptible living things, we know everything corruptible living. When he's talking about corruptible living thing, I'm talking about you can go from food, I'm, you can nail people to the cross on that one. I'm talking about you can living, a corruptible living thing, you can go in Leviticus 11 and beat and beat anybody up with this verse and pair it to that. Because all you got to do is use one or two, but you can beat somebody up really on that and they can't get around it. So as then it says, though they walk therein, neither melt their icy kinds of heavenly meat. So all this here, you can you can tie people into something and you can tear them down. You can tear down any doctrine with this, but when you use him and then you use him by himself, most people are not going to get it. So then what they're going to do, they're going to say, well, to me, I see this, or to me, it says that. And you don't want that. You want to show them the precepts of it on what the Most High is saying. You don't want to speak for the Most High. Let the Most High speak for himself. You don't need help. So once you do that, you'll be the, you'll be the nail them down on that one. Okay. One, I will use the verse, but then you just need a couple other verses to back you up. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm.
And this here, the same thing. Uh, you have a uh, wisdom of Solomon. I see you. You. It seems like it seems like uh, you like to go on wisdom of Solomon, which is extremely good. But then, always as you go through wisdom of Solomon, start understanding what he's saying and what we're gonna do even today. We're gonna look at um, some spiritual words, and I'm gonna show you how to flip them. Okay. And basically, I'm think I'm being hip. So yeah, I know a lot of y'all kids don't correct me, but I think flipping it. Y'all get it. I'm gonna turn it around another way. Trying to trying to speak young, but I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but it says, but afterwards I saw a new generation of files when being led with their appetite, they asked delicate meats. See, now here he flipped this so hard, it's unreal because he said in, in uh they asked delicate meat. So right here it's dead, still talking about nourishment but it's feeding them spiritually because this is what they're looking for this is what i'm saying so when you go into wisdom of solomon you have to flip it around and you have to show other precepts to show to to to, to show what he's saying because if not most people ain't gonna get wisdom of solomon let alone going to the songs of solomon they're not going to get it but beautiful things beautiful beautiful beautifully the way you laid it out and then uh, here, and then it got a uh, Kinesia thoughts, and um, new generation us will be led, uh, will, will lead Israel, black people, good, and and uh, that have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, of the earth, are rightful throne with the very nourishment, the very nourished nutrients, doctrine of Yah, beautifully written. So, so. So, because this is the only way we can get back. That's it. And we have to be nourished with the word of God. So, you did this perfectly. It's very, 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 very good done. We're going to look at it. Uh, oh, one second. We're going to adjust this resolution. One second. Uh, let me stop sharing. And we have Sister Kim. I don't know why yours. Have this showed up. We have uh, Sister Kim and I want to share hers. I want to share hers and then I'm going to share the screen. We go. So it's in here. One second. Okay, Sister Kim, i Mike, and we're waiting on you. Okay. Me and Connor Tones and Celestial Tones. Mm -hmm. Um, you can turn to, um, me and Connor Tones. Me and Connor Tones is the most nutritious thing of all the food groups that you can eat. It has proteins and healing properties. Mm -hmm. Meat and celestial tones. Meat and celestial tones is the most holy offering to the higher. It gives you favor and salvation. He said, um, Levius, um, two, three. The, the maid of meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most whole of the offering to the Lord made by fire. To Maccabees 2.11, Moses said, because the sin meat offering was not to be eaten, it was consumed. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10.10, 10, by which we are sanctified through the offering of the body, of Jesus Christ once to all. Okay, so now with yours, I see you. Um, you are more give a uh, dialogue before you start showing precepts. My thing is, we'll go right here, and we give me in carnal terms. Put the verses below it. Now I'm gonna tell you, I don't, I don't think, you and, I don't think you and Kiki work together, but if y'all woulda. Actually, y'all would have been actually very dangerous. 
what I'm saying in a good way. Reason why, because even the way you explaining yourself, I get it. And I'm probably pretty sure most of the parents get it. I would have put a verse, because sooner you said meat in carnal terms, it's nutritious things of all food groups that you that you can eat. It has proteins and properties. If you would have put Genesis 129 there, you would have shut this whole thing down. Thank you. And see, and then your sister was sitting there explaining things, and she had the verses there. So that's why I say it would have been good to, 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 to sit with her and kind of see what she's doing because you you writing it out. It's saying meat in celestial return, the most holy offering to, to your house. And then it, it brings you favor and salvation. Now, I can sit there and we can talk about that part all day. How? Because in celestial return, the, okay, as he feeds us with the spiritual meat, that, that's what his word. So, as you're sitting there saying that, it brings you favor and salvation because with the knowledge of the Most High, with the knowledge of the Most High, it does both. So, okay. So, and then this, the same thing, as you were explaining this, actually, I even used that verse yesterday. This is how you make your election sure. You could have used that verse right there in Second Peter. Okay. Because you want to make sure meet in celestial terms. Because now, when you start saying in celestial terms, you want to you don't want to speak nothing of what people are trying to ingest as as um, satisfying the flesh. You talk yes, things for satisfying the spirit. That's why you're using this. See, but then you know, as you go back here, and now you're saying, you know, the the, the remnant of meat offering shall, you know, should be should be Aaron and, and his sons and all that. These here, some of these, some of these verses here, I wouldn't have used because some of these here would still mix up some people. This um the um the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It should be the most holy offering that's made by fire. Most people still gonna want to understand what is meat. They still want to go want to understand what is meat because when you look back, uh, let me see, let me gotta go back. Okay, the carnal turn. So that's why it has to be back over here because now I'm just finding out all this here. So now I, I can get mixed up. But if you show me as you told me what it was, then you show it to me, then I can get it better. And then we see in Second Maccabees it says Moses said, because the sin meat offering was not to be eaten, it, it was consumed. So the main thing is we still need to know what that was. And the main thing it is talking about, we know it's talking about this here where it had to be consumed, we know it's talking about bread. It's not talking about no flesh. This, this is why we always want to understand what's going on here. This is, this is why we have to make sure we hold on to it. And then from the one you're closing it out with is Hebrews 10, 10 which, which, uh, by which we will, we will be sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once and for all. That's a beautiful part to, to end with, but you want to make sure that you end with it when it would have been right in here and it's, and it's telling you what it is. Because he said, because when you use this verse here, Hebrews 10, 10, he said that his body is meat indeed. That's what you have to use with that to back this up. Yes, sir. He actually says that. He actually tells you that you have to drink his blood and eat of his body, but he also talks about that his body is meat indeed. He actually says this. So when you, when you see that, you have to make sure you back that up. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to go through, uh, one second. We're going to go through... And I need Anthony. Uh, one second. Anthony, I need you to unmike. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through yours. And and this is switching up right now. Okay. 
Brother Anthony, you are up. The spiritual meaning of me, uh, I think scriptures, Deuteronomy 20, 20, on the trees which thou knowest, they be not trees for me, thou shalt destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt have bulwarks against the city that make war with thee until it disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have picked, uh, Second is the nine and six. So I went my way to the field and was called Ad Arden, like as he commanded me. And there I set him on the flowers and he beat of the field to the field. Okay. Uh, yeah, won't tell you what? One second, let me see about the screen. Let me let me see if I can straighten that part out for you. Cause I see, uh, one second. Cause I see it's uh, one second. It ain't letting me go over there. Sir, can you hear me? Now I was trying to. Uh, I need to. Uh, I was gonna. I was gonna adjust that image to, so you can. Uh, so you can uh, see it now. Now let me go back. And make it Do I read it again, sir? Yeah, now now you can finish it out, but that's what everybody everybody Sorry, I can bear I can barely hear you. Yeah, now it's just uh oh, won't tell you what? That's can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what was, I don't know why some people and I had to had the mic off. I had the mic laying down. So yeah, so now they can see it says in meat, uh, in the meat of the same satisfied me. Okay. Uh, slide, please, okay. Uh, meat in the Bible can be changed with the word knowledge, as it does as does water in very many scriptures. But meat can also mean what it sounds like food, with food being the kernel meaning. For example, it puts meat for knowledge in Judges 14 and 14. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness, and it cannot in three days expound the riddle. In this scripture, the eater could be an Israelite gathering and digesting or learning food, which, which food would be changed out for meat, which would be knowledge. I'm going to tell you, you're a dangerous man. That was beautifully done. <laughs> you're a yeah. dangerous man. Thank you, sir. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, these here, um, beautiful scriptures ran. I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't have never even thought to use Samson. Thank you, sir. It never crossed my boy. I'm gonna tell you, you nailed this down to the cross. Cause okay. what you did, what you did, you set us up beautifully when you when you put this right here. Meat in the Bible can be interchanged with the word knowledge, as does water in many in very many scriptures, but meat can also mean what it sounds like food. That's where you did, that's where you set me up. And then you said, for example, to replace meat for knowledge, and you use Judges 14, 14. Now, my question is this. Who did it? Sir? Who did this? Oh, I did on my own. You're a dangerous man. That's in a good way. Thank you, you're a dangerous man. Uh, literally, um, you flip this actually so tight in a in a in, in actually. Won't tell you what I can't say anything because I'm going back. I want to see what you're going to do the carnal side, but you just in the spiritual side of me, and that's what you actually explain. You yes. nailed this down to the cross. 
So, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, you used a verse. Uh, as I said, we all learned something. I wouldn't have never even thought to go to, to judges. That wouldn't, that wouldn't even cross my mind. And you actually use that verse and you actually, and, and, and I know this right here is a riddle from Moses. I mean, a riddle from Samson. Cause that's who it was from. And, uh, yeah. And he, and he actually, he actually had him caught up. And it says in this scripture, the eater could be an Israelite gathering and digesting learning, learning food, which you change out for knowledge. And that knowledge that he had, it took them seven days and they still couldn't figure it out. Because that, that knowledge that he dropped, they could not figure out what it was. Brother Anthony, I take my hat off to you. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, man, that, 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 that's good. That was good. Uh, why is my mouse never going on that side? Let me see. It don't want to go over there for some reason. I don't know why. But now we got the first one who was up. We got to go to our brother, our brother Anthony. I mean, our brother Devin. Let me put you up, brother Devin. Uh oh. Let me let me close that. Let me close up. Let me close out some of these other ones. Yeah. Let me delete this out. And let me put you up. And then we have the last one up is Brother Devin. As we said, the first will be last and the last will be first. So we got Brother Devin. And Brother Devin, you are up. Shalom, elders. Okay. My name is Devin White, and I'm with the Lost Sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. So let me start. What is the meaning of me? By Devin White. Next slide. The meaning of me is knowledge, and knowledge is the truth, dark saying, parable, as a mystery of the Bible. So, as you can see, I have a picture of a person that has light bulbs going inside of their head and a black kid reading the Bible. So, the first picture shows the person having ideas of what a precepting is really about. Mm -hmm. And then the second picture shows that the uh, uh, kid is really excited. Well, the Israel kid is really excited for learning how to precept. Okay. Next slide. Here are the precepts that I found uh, to help, to help me find the meaning of me. So Hebrews 5 and 14 reads, but strong knowledge belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of youth have their senses exercised. I have to stop. I have to stop. Hold it. I have to stop you for one second. Did all these, did our parents just see what this, what this guy did? Yes, I did. <laughs> this dude didn't really make me cry. Oh, I see what this dude did. Oh, I'm so proud of him. That is awesome. Oh, my that God. Man, man you're going to make me cry in here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you 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 kind of left me. I'm gonna have to finish out. Just wait a minute. Go ahead. Go. Oh, oh go. my gosh. <laughs> go ahead. Go 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 ahead, Dev. Go ahead. Go just go ahead, my friend. <laughs> they have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, moving on to Ezekiel 16 and 19, that reads. My knowledge also, which I gave thee, anointed and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor 
and thus it was, saith the Lord God. Mm. Next slide. Now Ezekiel 42 and 12 reads, And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for knowledge, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be. Hold it, hold it, hold it one second. Are y'all seeing how this kid flipping this stuff? Yes, we do. Yes. Yes. Uh, and put me to shame. Wow. You know, you see, he's not reading this carnally. It brings tears to my eyes right now. Oh my gosh. That's baby Moses over there. He's taking your spot, oh Elder. You ain't, never, you ain't never lied there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. That I, man, you, because I'm telling you, dude, you literally getting, you tearing me down. You attempt me. You almost got me crying. You yes, sir. Got me crying. Uh, yes, Father. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead and finish it. It makes me, me so proud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, yeah, let me, let me. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, my brother. Whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for knowledge and the leaf thereof for medicine. Next slide. Now, here is where I get to the kernel meanings and the spiritual meanings. Now, the kernel meaning for Leviticus 2 and 1 reads, and when, the Lord, and when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. Now the spiritual meaning for Leviticus 2 and 1 is, and when any will offer a knowledge offering until the Yahweh offering shall be of first fruits, or you could say the best, and he shall pour anointed oil upon it and put sweet savor they're on. Now hold it right there. He flipped this so hard. I'm gonna show you something. Y'all have to see this. When you offer these offerings to the most high, you have to have knowledge of what you did wrong is why you offering it. And this is his writings down here at the bottom. So he flipped this and it says, and when you offer a knowledge offering, you're acknowledging what you have done to the most high. This is high, this is flipped. Offering shall be the first fruits, and he's telling you it has to be the best. He literally giving you the spiritual meaning of what Leviticus 2 and 1 actually is saying. Because as I said, and I'm gonna tell you what would have been most dangerous, if he would have put um uh, Hebrews 10, 26, after we come to the knowledge of the truth, if we willfully sin, we come to the knowledge of the truth, there is no more sacrifice. He's telling this, he's telling you exactly what it is. Because once you have that knowledge, this is when you do it because you recognize what you're doing wrong. <laughs> and he's telling you already the spiritual side on what... Because this is what you do. This is why you're offering it. Because why? Because you had knowledge of what you did wrong. Go ahead, my brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Can you move to the next slide? <laughs> now, the kernel meaning for Leviticus 2 and 4 reads, And if thou bring an oblation of a meat offering baked in the oven, it shall be eleven cakes of fine flour mingled with oil or 11 wafers anointed with oil. Now the spiritual meaning for Leviticus 2 and 4 reads, and if thou bring an offering of a knowledge offering baked in the oven, it shall be without sin cakes of first fruits or the best mingled with anointed oil or without sin wafers anointed with oil. Next slide. Now, Leviticus 2 and 5, the kernel meaning for that one reads, And if thy oblation be a meat offering baked in a pan, it shall be a fine flour 
unleavened mingled with oil. Now the spiritual meaning for Leviticus 2 and 5 reads, And if thy offering be a knowledge offering baked in a pan, it shall be a first fruits or the best without sin mingled with oil. Next slide. Uh, that, that was it. <laughs> I had the right one, or was it another one? Oh, uh, that's good. That's uh, what it all what it was. Uh, ain't nothing I can say. We all dumb here. Oh my gosh! Yeah, ain't, ain't nothing. I to shut us all down, huh? Yeah, he didn't. He didn't shut a whole bunch of stuff down. Thank you, brother Tommy. Oh. Yeah, you. I'm proud of you, Devon. Thank you, <laughs> Sister Carly. Good job. Your, your dad is probably. I mean, I know he's got to be over, overjoyed with joy. Uh, yes, ma'am. Man, we're gonna call you Baby Moses from here out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, my question is this. What made you start flipping the spiritual meaning and you and you and you start this you're literally just programming it to where the spiritual meaning what it was saying. So like when like when you read it the regular meaning, it uh really doesn't uh sound uh like if you're really saying it like like Yahweh wants you to put it. So that's how I uh, flipped it around and changed it like how it was supposed to be. You are a dangerous. Kid. Oh my gosh. You oh are, my gosh. <laughs> you are a dangerous kid. Because uh I want to ask you a couple of questions. So when you so when you read the Viticus, we got two and four still showing. Do it read normal to you or do it do it or do it make more sense the way you see it in the spiritual meaning? makes more sense when I read it in the spiritual meaning so that I know what I'm saying the words actually know what the meaning of the words are. I'm going to tell you something, my brother. I'm going to show you something because I, I have to, I'm a, actually, I might, might have to talk to you off, offline. So, 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 so when you read, so when you read many scriptures, do you see it? Do it make sense to you in carnal sense or make more sense to you in spiritual sense? It makes more sense in spiritual meaning. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a dangerous kid. I'm going to tell you something. Because um, actually, how you coming off is almost the same way. So the same thing like with, um, I want to go to the same thing. Let's say like with this Ezekiel. Yes, sir. When you sitting there, you seeing this, and 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 you seeing the trees and everything else. And for me, and this is seeing the meat for knowledge. See, I'm gonna tell you what I do. I I love about what you did. When you when you putting this here, you focusing in on this knowledge here. That's what you focusing in on because that's what was asked of you to do. What I want you to start doing. And I'm gonna I'm I'm start leaning on you for, and I gotta do it for a reason. When you know on the spiritual side of what that is, see, and we already know what it is, I'm gonna start wanting you to flip all of it. Because this is literally talking about spirits, this is talking about, this is talking about people who, who has that knowledge. So those are spirits that's doing that. I'm yes, gonna, sir. I'm gonna start having you to flip that all. So besides honing in on what's being asked of you, I'm gonna have you to flip it all. Because yes, I think, because I think it's something real different about you, to which um, is actually very good. It's extremely, uh, it's extremely good. So I, yes. Can I uh, tell you the spiritual meaning of tree? Yeah. Uh, the spiritual meaning of tree equals people. Mhm. Mm oh yeah. So. Yeah, it, that's what it is. That is clearly what it is. There's no, there's no argument there. So, you know, so now your dad and them, your dad is showing you guys some, I'm talking about, he, man, he's showing you guys some solid stuff and, and you running off to, you running off to a direction to where um, the, the most high feeding you this stuff. 
Jeez. Elder Johnson? Yeah. Can I hear the Johnson real quick? Um, with Anthony, I never got a chance to see his homework because he did it at the last minute. And I was a big concern, but that concern is completely gone. Anthony, uh, Anthony didn't have no issues. Yeah, completely gone. Devin, I actually explained it to him, and he got off the phone with you. He kept telling you, you asked him, do you understand what I'm saying to you about having the verses internal and then changing to spiritual? And he kept saying to you, yes, I understand. So when he got off the phone with you, I said, Devin, don't tell Elder you understand if you don't understand. But he did. I tell you what, he completely understood because he explained it. Right. And saying, I'm talking about when you have a kid, can, and how old are you, Devin? See, because now that's throwing me off again. How old are you, Devin? 10. <laughs> This don't even make common sense, dude. Uh, this literally don't make common sense. When you have a kid can sit there and explain to you this verse, what the spiritual meaning of it is. See, and the main thing is, the reason why it's so, why it's so, so trippy, even when I read the Bible and I read it in, in a carnal sense, it actually makes no sense to me. None. This is why I'm asking you those questions, because it don't make no sense to me. It makes more sense to me in the spiritual sense. That's literally all it's all it's breaking down to. He's not saying he's not saying the carnal sense of it. it. It don't make sense. So what it does, it'll make you have to break it down, make you have to precept to get the understanding. That's why they do that. That's what the Bible does. When you see it in the spiritual side, the kid is not understanding, so he has to find something else to tie to it to make sure he can get it. That's what it's doing. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, so, and he's 10 years old, this makes no common sense. Thank you. No common sense. So, yeah, so, so, um, so the same thing is, is, is uh, literally, uh, man, it, you literally, I, I, it's, it's nothing as far as um, going through it. To um, to show you, the only thing I say is use all the same size fonts when you when you when you put it out. Yes, sir. All the same and bold your stuff. That's pretty much that'll be it because you explain this. You went through it perfectly. You you. you I'm trying to work on it, but it didn't work. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, you, you did a beautiful job. You actually, you broke this down. Uh, the meaning of knowledge and the knowledge uh, is, a, is a truth, dark sayings, parable, mysteries of the Bible. I'm talking about you literally broke this down. You literally yes, broke that down. So there's nothing I can say there because literally, literally that's what it is. It's dark saying parables and mysteries in the Bible, literally what it is. And and see, and, and this is what I was trying to get, and you, you literally explained it. So it took away all all things away from it. So yeah, so so now with this, um, as I'm going through it, I don't see no I don't see uh, no other way to where um, I'm gonna have to get you guys' address because this was here. This one here was the best presentation. Of what meat is because actually I don't think any parent of any parent can sit there and say that they didn't quite understand still what meat is because he gave you the carnal sense which is to, it tells you right even here and I got it on uh, Leviticus 2 5 he's telling you actually what it is but then he still and he <laughs> this is the crazy part he breaks it down into the spiritual sense right off the bat Anything offering be uh, um, be a knowledge. So he's telling you what it is, because that's all that's all meat is. So the, 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 the way I see it is um, for this one here, this, this 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 presentation right here has the tablet. That's, that's the way I see it. And if uh, somebody object to that, 
because they don't think he should have it. And another one's better. Y'all can I give you I I'll open the floor up right now. But other than that, that's where I see the tablets going. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah. 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 Well, yeah, so you good job, you, good job. Yeah, you good job for all of young Israel. Yeah, all your great job, awesome. guys. Yeah, yeah. All, everybody did a wonderful job. Yeah. I mean, love it, love it, love it. Good job, y'all. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all y'all did a wonderful job. So, all of y'all did a good job. It's not, it's not yeah, but it's but, but I think uh, with Devin doing, Devin is taking that extra step. To stay ahead, and this is and this is where I almost go back into where I tell the kids almost like um, when you do basketball, where you see kids that look at uh, 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 Kobe Bryant and and uh, Michael Jordan now, and they're trying to sit there and why are they so good at doing something, but after practice, all the other kids will go play, but Jordan them must keep there. Jordan them must stay there and keep shooting around. So that's what they do, you know. Same thing. Um, I even tell some people about my son Michael, who was a, uh, he was a, uh, he was a triple jumper, and they were trying to figure out how he was the number one triple jumper. But he'd go in the morning, he'd practice, then he'd practice with the team, and then when the team finished practicing, he'd go practice again, and then practice on his own. So it just depends on what type of effort you put in. You see, you put in the right effort, you see what the effort comes out of it. The Most High works with you because. Literally, he's working with this kid. Yeah, seeing all the kids he's working with, but when you put in that extra effort, he's he's showing you that extra effort. What happens? So that's a that's a beautiful thing. And what we're going to do? Uh, actually, well, we actually have um, actually it's really kind of over. But what I want to do, I want to set up for for next week. What I want to do with uh, all the kids, we're going to go through. We're going to go through some Bible word meaning. And what I want you guys to understand is, I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to pull up a couple of words right now I want to get set for. And um, I want to see what you guys going to do based on these. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the words on what they mean, how they structured. And actually, I'm going to need the, um, I'm gonna need the, uh, the spiritual side and the carnal side <clears throat> of it. <clears throat> But I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna show you what it is and what it means. But later, I'm gonna need you just to help me tie to it to where we can understand it. So we are gonna know what the spiritual side means. We are gonna know what the carnal side means. But then later on, I'm gonna have you to show me to tie to it. That's all we're gonna be doing to where we're gonna be able to where we're gonna be able to uh, do many things from that point. Now, some people are gonna some people are gonna have some issues. Some are not. And I think one of the sides is I don't think uh, a couple of y'all is going to have any problem because what I'm getting ready to do, I'm getting ready to share my screen right now. And we're going to look at a couple of these words. And let me go to here in desktop two. Why is doing it that way? And... Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at we're gonna look at Abel. So what we wanna do, we're gonna look at Abel. And you know Abel, <clears throat> you can pull it in, and you can see Genesis 4 2. So most of you guys are gonna be able to look and pull it up right automatically, pull up Abel. And we're gonna we're gonna look at the whole chapter. And we're gonna see right there where it says in in, in, in uh, verse one, it says Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from Yahweh. That's clearly what's being said. But now something happened. Right immediately in verse 2, it don't say, and Adam knew his wife Eve again. You see right there, it says, and she again bared his, his brother Abel. So now we do know, clearly saying in Scripture, because one verse followed the other, is showing that Cain and Abel was twins. It don't say twins in here, as well as you can look at um, uh, Jacob and Esau. It don't say twins. 
but it tells you at the beginning, but when, when, once they buried them, it just tells you the difference on what they are. But you see right here, it says, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. But we're gonna focus in on Abel. We wanna know what Abel means and what he's about. So spiritual side, we're gonna look at a few things. We're gonna look at 4.2, which is telling you, this is actually talking about a person. But now we want to also, also understand spiritually what it also means. That's what we got to find out. So we're going to so we're going to look at that one, and we're going to look at a few other ones. I'm trying to get uh, one second. If I can get this. Down, okay. So we want to know exactly what's going on there. And um, it's another one that I want to pull. And let me see. Do everybody know what a bead mean? Or a bead? No, sir. Okay. Let me see. For a second. We're going to pull that one down. One second. I wonder why I said it that way. Do y'all see do y'all see the King James Bible on there? Or what do y'all see? Yeah. Okay, did y'all did y'all see the King James Bible on the last one? Because it's showing differently. Yes, sir. Okay, so the last one showed the King James Bible? Because it's showing like it was showing a word or something. Did it show the King James Bible on on, on uh Abel? Yes, sir. Hmm. My screen is showing differently. Okay, so what we show showing here is saying this is a, this is a, this day, ye out of the month of B. We want to find out what that is. So we got we got Abel. We have a B. Now, what I want you guys to do, I want you to look in these 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 couple of areas. And what we're gonna do here, let me click on the on the whole verse here. And what we want to find out is in, in this right here, it says, This day came out of the month a bee. So what I want you to do, I want you to read just this chapter 13. And when we get to Abel, I want you to read just that chapter in Abel. And I want y'all to try to get an understanding exactly about what's going on, how they are working, and then we're going to see the spiritual side of it to where we're going to break it all down. And we're going to find out what those are. Now, what's going to happen uh, next week after we do that, after that happens, what we're going to do, let me pull this, let me pull this other part up here. Because after we do that, I'm going to go through about five to six words. We're going to get the spiritual understanding. We're going to get the carnal understanding on both. On, then we're going to get them on both on here, and then we're going to get it on the other five. On top of that, what's going to happen is I'm going to tie you to all the scriptures to where you can understand it. But there's a couple of scriptures I'm going to leave out of there to where you can still get the understanding. Those are the ones I'm going to have you to put with it. So you're going to get the spiritual meaning and the celestial principles behind it. And I'm gonna give you the verses to it to where we're gonna completely understand them. But then I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave out a verse or two verses out of there that will give you the understanding. And I'm gonna need you guys to put those verses to it. All right. Do everybody understand what's going on? 
Cause we can we can do we can run we can run a couple of them if you yeah. want to see, huh? Okay, cause um I tell you what we we can um we can run a, a famous one right now. Uh, let's go here. We're gonna look at uh Matthew. Matthew five twenty six. Matthew five twenty six. Can everybody see what I'm pulling up? Okay, so we're gonna go to Matthew five twenty six. Now, it's saying one thing. So five twenty six, it says, "And now verily, I say unto thee." Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost partings. So what is this? What is this? What is this actually saying? We want to find out what it's saying. Now I'm gonna show you what it's saying right up here. Can anybody tell me what that is? Amen. Do you know that's what do you know that verse is telling you the same thing? It's saying yes. that it's telling saying the identical thing. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna look at some of these to where we can look at them, to where we can understand them. And see, we can also go into Revelations um three fourteen, three, 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 three. Well, let me just get over there. Let me just get over there to where we can get it. Three, 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 three. Okay. It says, three fourteen. And unto the angel of the church of Lysodosians, write these things, saith a man, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now you see right here where it says, "Things saith a man." Then it, and then it continues to go but the problem with most people have we're going to put a man in here and I'm going to put a search in there and I want to find it dang I didn't know how to do it this way okay same thing like this with numbers we'll go to numbers and we'll go down to 22 show you something 22, you see it saying, most times you're going to see in the Bible, it's going to always be at the end. So, it's saying, and the waters cause us the curse, the curse shall go unto thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot, and the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. Now, do people know why they say amen? Because I'm going to share it with you guys. See, I should pop this on the adults, but I should, but I'm going to share it with you guys because you need to know exactly what it was saying. So this is why it says right here in, um, in um, Matthew, why it's talking about this. And I'm going to show you, it says, and unto the angel of the church of Lysodos, you'll write, these things saith the Amen. Anybody want to take a stab at that? With the what, why it says Amen and what do Amen mean? Anybody want to take a stab at it? Nobody. Well, brother Devin, I'm gonna have to put you on the spot, my brother. Yes, do sir. You, you want to just take a stab at it? What do you think Amen means? Um, I think amen means, wait, can I read it again? Yeah, yeah, 14, it says, i read it for you. It says, and unto the angel of the church of Nedodosius, write, these things saith the amen, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Uh -huh.
Don't worry. If you get it wrong, don't even worry about it. We just we just want to make sure we're gonna understand what it means. I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you what it means anyway. Um, it's the title. Okay, he says the title. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I see. I see. I see all the, I see all the little ricks. Uh, any of the ricks want to take a stab at it? What do you think it means? Yeah, it mean? yeah. yeah, one sec. One second. The Robinsons. One second. I'm gonna come to you. What do you think it means? Just tell me what you think a man means. Just take a stab at it. Think about it. Think about it. What do you think it means? Okay. Uh, I had the Robinsons, but like was eager to say something, so I'm gonna go to the Robinsons. And Vincent yeah, Robinson, so can you tell me what you think it means? Yeah. What you think a man means? Yeah. What do you think it means? What do you think that a man means? The most high. Okay. okay. So you said mean the most high. Okay, hold it right there. We're gonna we're gonna go to another one. I see uh 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 this is Sister Samuel. I need you to tell me what you think that means. Um so when it says the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I believe it means Christ Jesus himself. Which I feel like that means amen. Yeah, so amen. So amen. We want to know exactly what amen is saying. I feel like amen means one. And I feel like Christ Jesus himself is one. Okay. So amen. Okay. Is- All right. Okay. okay. That, 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 that's a good shot, too. I'm, I'll tell you that right now. I want to see. Now I'm going to go to. Um, uh, Sister Kim, what do you think? I think it means like, like I think it means like um um like like just like the beginning of time. Um, brother Elder. Yeah. I think it means um not like as a title, but like yeah. Yes, yes. Like it normally, I think it means, uh, so, uh, let it be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, yeah. But let's, let's, we're going to let everybody finish out before we cut them off. We got to let everybody finish out. Okay. Uh, sister, sister Kiki, what do you, what do you think it means? Okay. I think it means the faithful and the true witness because, um, Ooh. verse 14, it says, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Right. The say thing saying the amen. Yeah. Comma the faithful and the true witness the beginning of the creation of God. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, you are you a good thinker. I, I give you your credit there. You, 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 you honing around in on it. Okay, but we, we'll hold that one. Let's go. Let's go to uh, brother. Let's go to brother Robinson. What do you think? What do you think, my brother? I need him to unmic. Yeah, yeah, brother Robinson. I need you to unmic. Tell me what you think. Tell me, tell me what you think. A man mean. Yeah, it's fourteen. What do you think, my brother? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. All right, Brother Richardson, what do you think? Uh, it means what? Thank you. Okay. All right. So he thinks it means thank you. I think uh, we have a couple of other ones in here. Like, let me find them. Miss some. Because some I know I've seen them, but now I don't see them. Oh, it's, there we go. She got her hand up. Sister Morton. Go ahead. What do you think it means? So or so be it? It what? So or so be it. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. You kids is you kids are pretty dangerous. One danced around it. I think she had it dead on. I'm gonna go to her, and and it said, as you saying it, so be it. I want you to hold your thoughts, Sister Morton. I want you to hold that thought. And I and I want to go back to uh, I want to go back to uh, I believe it was Sister Kim. Sister Kim or was Sister Kiki. Sister Kiki. I think it was Sister Kim. No, it, was, it must have been Sister Kiki. I see Emmy. Now you said you said what 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 was it, Sister Kim? Sister Kiki? I said uh the faithful and the true witness. Okay. So now what made you think that? Because I remember like I think there's supposed to be like a comma and then tell you the meaning of what it's supposed to be. And I just thought that. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you. So Kiki is dead, on, is dead on track. And that's why I went here. Because if you look at it, it tells you, it says, amen, the faithful and true witness. So what it means is confirming the truth. That's all it was saying. Most people say amen and thinking that's the finishing of the verse. And it's not. You just confirming what was being said is true. That's why you say amen. It's confirming the truth. That's all it is. So when you have people pray and they sit there and they uh, amen, they think they're finishing it off. They think they're finishing it off and it actually confirming the truth that's being said, especially when you see it from the Bible. So if you see somebody reading from the Bible, they say amen, amen to that. They're confirming the truth. That's all it's saying. It's not saying nothing else. You confirming what what they what they read is true, and it's true to the Bible. So very good, very good, very good, Sister Kiki. <clears throat> very good. So 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 we're gonna we're gonna look at another one, and this is how you start getting it to where you understand what they are. Now, this is gonna be a little bit more of a tricky one, which. Uh, that you're going to get into. And, and, but, I, but I want you to understand what, the, what some of these words are. So we're going to hone around in, in like in A's for a minute. And um, I want to get to it. Let me see. Because this one is a little bit more different. And we're going to go right to, I see y'all see me pulling it up. And y'all see the word that I'm pulling up. And can anybody tell me what do that word mean? Okay, I see Brother Wayne. <clears throat> uh, it means mankind. Okay, that took all the fun out of that. So that's what it actually means. So that moved all the fun out of that one. Let's move forward. Let's grab another one because that's exactly what that means. And, and, where, you, and where you break that down at, you can do it in two places. <clears throat> We're gonna go to one. It's in five, and um, it's right here in five two, and then I'm gonna show you where he actually did it. So you look at five two. It says, "Male and female created he them them. He made two of them, and blessed them. He's talking about them both, and called their names what? Adam." That's, he cleared it right there. So the other part that you used, you use you use Genesis one and twenty seven. If I'm making sure I'm correct, and he's telling you right here. So God created man in His own image. In the image, God created 
he him, male and female created he them. Genesis 5, 2, and he called their names Adam. That's your precept to that. So you nail that to the cross. Beautiful. And this, and this is literally how it should be going to where you guys should be able to nail this stuff down to where you're going to get it automatically. Thank you. Yeah. So, so when you see Adam carnally talking to somebody, you know, you say, well, Adam, well, yeah, you're talking about this man, but spiritually you already know what it actually is. Adam is just talking about mankind. But most people are not going to understand what you're saying when you say it. You're going to have to start explaining it. Actually, I was going to use this one, but we're going to use this other one. And I want to show you what this actually means to get a better, to get the better understanding of what that is. And we're going to look at this one here. <clears throat> A X E. We want to understand what Acts mean. We're going to go to Acts. I will need to find it. I don't know why this does it that way. I need to find something else to do it. But we'll go to Deuteronomy. <clears throat> and Deuteronomy says, as, as when man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood. And his hands uh, fetches a stroke with the axe. Do anybody know what the axe actually signifies? Anybody want to take a shot at it? Anybody want to take a shot at what do an axe mean? I think I could. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's like a blade. A blade. Okay, but what do an axe? So what we want to do, we want to look at behind the word, and how do an axe work, <clears throat> and what do an axe do? Because it's telling you right there what it does. For the other. Yes. It all cuts. Mm hmm. It, it cuts, but what is it cutting? What is it cutting? Well, it's cutting the tree. So, so now, let's y'all start honing in on this. Because <clears throat> some of you guys are going to start honing in. <clears throat> and then I'm going to come to you, Sister Morton, one second. Come to you. So as we go into it, now, you already explained it earlier. What spiritually is a tree? Okay. So if it is people, now what is this axe doing? Okay, so they're using something. So now I'm going to go to Sister Morton, and I want to hear what Sister Morton has to say. So you tell me what is the axe, Sister Morton? It's like it cuts down wicked people. Okay, you you right in it, but we just need to change it up a little bit. You but you saying you saying correctly what it is, but we need to change what it's doing. We need to change basically how you formulating that word. Is it doctrine? Hmm. Is it doctrine? You you guys, boy, you guys, are, I'm talking about you guys are actually all over it. Uh, Sister Samuel? Um, I believe it means separation of people. Like, it's separating you from your family, like, from its roots. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. You guys are giving beautiful answers because I'm going to tell you, you're right in there, and one sister actually honed in on it. But it signifies where man has using his own intelligence. So what he's doing, he's cutting down intelligence to come up with his own thought patterns. This is that's what that's what the axe actually represents. We're gonna see some of this and we're gonna we're gonna look at one of them right now. And this is this is this is what this is what happens. Let's let's go to Jeremiah. We're gonna go to Jeremiah 10. Oh, one second, I went too far. And you see, and you actually see this quite a bit. 
in scripture as you go through it a lot of times. But we're gonna go to one, we're gonna go to one where men like to use their own thought patterns. And and that's why I say all you guys are giving good answers. Very good answers. But with those answers, what we're gonna do, we're gonna tie some scripture to it and we're gonna get some understanding there. So we're gonna look at Jeremiah 10 and verse 3. It says, For the custom of the people are vain. So we do know it's cutting down people because it's cutting down trees, as what Brother White said earlier. And then what we had once was I think it was Brother Sister Kanisha, where she was talking about how um it was, it was, it was, it was that was you said that, Sister Kanisha? It was you or Sister Kim. One of you guys is that what? Yeah, as far as um, it was representing what it was representing uh, far as the acts, but but when you start talking about cutting down people who has the intelligence or the knowledge of the Most High, is what they do, and this is what this is saying. So it's saying for the custom of the people, it's not saying people of God. Custom of the people are vain. For one that cutteth a tree out of a forest. the work of the hands of the workmen with an ax is telling you exactly what they're doing. So as it gets into it, it lets you know what it does. Mm -hmm. And most time when they're using that ax, they normally cutting down trees mm -hmm. that has great wisdom. So you're talking about cutting down people who have great wisdom. Are y'all following that? Yes, sir. Okay. Because okay. if anybody need more explanation, we can go way deeper into this. No, sir. Okay. So we want to understand all the time this this is what axes represent. It normally want to cut down knowledge from people to, to to install their own intelligence, which you can find many other intelligence, which you can go into Maccabees 142, where the king told people. They're going to all become one people and go away from all your laws and you're going to come under my laws. This is some of the stuff that they do. This is what they do. And then what they do, they'll confirm it. Amen. They confirm that as a truth. Once it's confirmed as a truth, they make that solid. And then if you break it, they will, they, they will do that by death. That's normally what happens. Now we're going to look at... Uh, Another one uh, I thought we were going to do um, this should be let me see I wonder you, you guys should be able to do that one also let me see I believe I believe you guys can get this one I really do so I think I might go ahead and run with this one I tell you what we're going we to run with this one because I believe you guys can actually get it we're going to look at after. This will be our last word we're going to look at. And we're going to look at after. And we're going to look at Genesis 1 and 11. It says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herbs yielding seeds, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind. After. Do anybody know what after mean in this, what it's talking about? Because this is talking strictly celestial and not terrestrial. It's not talking nowhere carnal. So we need to understand what do after his kind or after what do after mean? Anybody want to take a stab at it? I is see it yes. the same? Who? What you say? Is it the same? Is it the same? Yeah. Is the same as saying um so after you saying it's the same? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You 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 close around there. You you close around it. You close around it. I, I give you credit. You close around there. Yeah. So, so we have sister, we have sister Robinson giving us a strong lead out. She gave us, she gave us a strong lead out. 
Cause she she honing she honing directly. She saying she saying it's one of the same. She is, she's giving you a strong lead after it. I'm talking about she giving us a strong lead. We should we should be able to hone in on this now. Cause she gave you a, a seriously strong lead on that. How old are you, Sister Robinson? Huh? How, how, how old is she? Oh, that's that's my son, Enoch. <laughs> He's oh, six. That's your son, Enoch? Oh, okay. I'm yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. His voice was different. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He still got something to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, well, he gave us a strong lead out, you guys. I'm done about so so we should be able to tie into this. Cause, he, Cause he's saying it. He's saying it's one of the same. Is that is that is that what you saying, Brother Robinson? Is that what you said? Is I'm I just want to make sure I'm quoting you correctly. You saying that it's the same? He's asking you. Uh, huh? Is that what he said? That's a yes or no. I, I'm trying to just make sure. Yes. Or no, yes. Okay, so okay, so he's saying it's one of the same. So we have Sister Morton. We're gonna go with her. What what, what she got? Because 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 brother brother Robinson came. He's coming out and he's he's literally leading us right to it. More like similar. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's saying he's saying that's what he's saying. It's similar. Brother Elder. Yes. I think it will be unto. Unto. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Unto. Yeah. See, unto. Yeah. You, you name. Yeah. You got. I'm talking about. Y'all are so right up on it, and um, and what we're gonna do? I'm gonna take one more because literally, you guys are actually right at it. Yeah. You guys are right at it. Anybody else before we just go ahead? Because literally, you know. Okay. You got Brother Robinson. He he came out, and then we had the other brother come out. So you you got nailing it to the cross. So so anybody else want to give a shot? After that, huh? Okay. Well, Sister Morton, will Sister Morton be the last one? Same nation. What? Same nation. Same nation. Actually, that's that's good. So what we gonna do? Let's go to Genesis. We're gonna go to Genesis. We're gonna, we're gonna look at a couple of places where we where, where we're gonna hone in on it. Let's go to Genesis sixteen thirteen. And we're gonna we're gonna hone in on this. Genesis sixteen thirteen. We're going to look at a couple of things. In Genesis 16, 13, it says, and she named, you know, and she called the name of Yahweh that spake unto her, thou God seest me, for she said, have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore, the well was called Beer Lahar uh, Riyah. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Beri. Now, if you look up, up, if you look up in there, it says, "I also looked after him that seeth me." See, these are start giving you some keys. And I'm going into that complex side because I want you to see something else. So we need to look at the complex to start breaking that down. Because what they said, they talking about is still talking about talking about one of the same. This is what Brother Robinson said. This talking about one of the same. Same as everybody still saying, one of the same kind. Exactly what it is. Because when you look at this verse right here in Genesis 1:11. It says, yield and seed and fruit, and yield and fruit after his kind, after 
his kind, one of the same. Now, I don't know how old Brother Robinson is, but. I'm six years old, and I'm turning Yeah, they, they, and that let you know they're a kid because they're going to let you know they're getting ready to turn another age. Because you know what, once we're older, we'll sit there and we'll say we're 30 and we will stay at 30 until the last day that that 30 had to hit 31. Yeah. yeah. So, so he let you know he's getting ready to be seven. So, so he ain't going to be staying at six. But the main thing he's, but the main thing that they were saying is they honing in on after. So they're saying it's going to be like, it's going to be one of the same. And that's actually what after means. Okay. That's what it's saying in the spiritual side. Now we're going to, now I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures which we're going to tie into and make it, and make it uh, be, be in the same place. And uh, actually, let me find you one of the best ones. And following this, no, we don't want that one. This other one to make it more clear for the uh, kids, because you guys are actually doing very, they're actually very good, very very good. And not that one. I'm trying to find one more for that you guys are, uh, clearly get. And let's all go to, let's go to Mark 8. Mark chapter 8. We're going to go to verse 34. And we're going to get the complete understanding of after. In Mark 8 and 34, it says, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also. So we know here he called a lot of people, but his disciples had to come with him. So all 12 of them came. And he said unto them, Whosoever will come after you see, it's Dhamma just like him. You see that? Do everybody see what that was happening there? He said, after me. So he said, if you got to come, you got to come the same way I'm going. If you're not going to come the same way, just like I'm doing, we're going to have a problem. And that's why he said, let him deny himself. That's why when that spirit rests upon you, that's why you have to kill off that flesh and let your spirit lead you the same as Yahweh Shai did. And he says what? Let him take up his cross and follow me. Why? Because you have to come after him just like him. Exactly what Brother Robinson started right out the gate saying. Do everybody see that? Now, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to pause here because I got about 10 minutes. And um, I do want to say it's actually still very, very shocking to where, as I say, with these kids to which how you guys can quickly understand things. And literally, you know, spiritually, you, you, you get it very quick. That's, that's, the, that's the best part I like. But um, just remember, when you see after, you want to know it's talking about the same thing. Most people say, well, after this happened, that happens. That's not mainly how the Bible sees it. You got to come just like something. After his kind, it's coming just like something else. That's why he's saying, so whosoever want to be like him, you have to come just like how he's doing it, as you see in this in Mark. Do everybody see that? Yes, Alter. Okay, so what we want to do, do we have any questions or is everybody good? But once we convene next week, we're going to go through about five or six of these words. And then I'm going to have you, I'm going to show you the relations to them. But then I'm going to have you guys to show me to come back with your homework to actually you're going to tie those to, to the, those words to the verses that you have found spiritually. 
I'm not going to look for them carnally. I want them spiritually. But if someone want to put it carnally to where the other people, you're more than welcome to do so. But do we have any questions? One question, Elder. Um, our iPad died when you were going through what the amen meant, and we didn't hear it. Oh, what the amen meant is is mm -hmm. it's confirming the truth. Okay. That's what it means. It confirms the truth. Okay. You got that email? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Sister Kiki nailed it, nailed it completely down. She, okay. she, she went straight to it. So okay. that's what that's why I say that's why I say kids going to shock you a little bit more because they not they not they not defiled like we were. So they are going to understand a lot more stuff. Same as um how we had uh, brother Devin. A lot of the stuff he he said he don't even see it in the carnal way. It's pretty much when I read my Bible, I don't read in the carnal sense. I see it on the flip side. I look behind the words on everything. Yeah. So, so that that's that's literally the best way to see the Bible because now then what it does, um, as we start doing some more, we'll get into precepting later with him, it's gonna probably come very simple to him. Okay. And that's the main thing, because if he if he gets this this way, which he did, and he did it on his own, mm -hmm. precepting gonna be it's going to be kind of straightforward to him because precepting for me was not hard. Oh. Yeah, it was not hard. My, 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 biggest, my biggest hurdle was, was trying to figure out what some of those words meant. But then once I understood what they mean, precepting is, is, I'm talking, is like a walk in the park. And that's probably, and so he's probably going to be the same way. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, because I'm because if he because if I see that he, it, if I see that it is real simple for him, I'm gonna remove him out of this class and I'm gonna put him in the adult class because it would, it, even though he's ten years old, because it wouldn't make no sense. Mm. Really, yeah, because it'd be it'd be useless for him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because it, it probably still might won't even be that challenging for him even over there. Because if he know if he understands what he's doing right now, yeah. He, you know, especially even like with, with his brother, because his brother is right, right, right along with him. Mm -hmm. And then what happens there, it becomes to where one gonna help the other, and they gonna pull each other, and then then you have two of them doing the same thing. So those are things that can come up. So then you have both of them who will pull up, and then we just have to move them out. And then we move them out, and they just go into this dog club. Okay. That's pretty much what's gonna happen. So that's what happens. You know, so then I don't look at, at that point then, I don't look at age. Yeah. So the only, the only, the only way I get a leniency to where if uh, homework's done, I do know that they have to do homework for class and school. They take care of that. They just not going to be leaned on as far as taking care of the work for us here. Mm -hmm. But if they have the time to where they can do it, but as far as the learning sessions, no, they're going to be more than open to it. That's basically how it works. So we, okay. we make sure they have to take care of the carnal side first because that, that's their requirements to make sure they can graduate to get you know all their diplomas to go where they need to go. And then, but to, but to understand the word of God, you know, they're going to always understand it so that they, they can always be fed. Mm -hmm. so. I was just explaining it to them. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so do we have any other, do we have anybody with questions? Any questions? Brother Elder? Yes. I have a question. Yeah. Um, why, is, um, uh, do, why are Israel, sorry, why are black people gossiping? Why are Israelites God's chosen people? Why are they God chosen people? I can show you that. Uh, one second. Let me pull this. One, Moses even asked that same question. One second. Let me see. Let me pull that real quick. One second. Mm. Mm. I got to pull that one one second. Let's pull that up. Let me 
me let me pull it one second. Let me get that because what happened is um they was they was just chosen, but then Moses clearly asked him. Not that one I want. It was a certain one I want. It's a certain verse I want to make sure it's clear. So give me one second. One second. Straight down, that's not the one I want. One second. His people, cause, cause, cause what happened? They when he took them out. But I'm trying to get this one second as we go, cause it's a certain verse that actually pinpoints that. This destroy, it. yeah, because most of the one I'm pulling up right now is the one to destroy, but that's not the ones I want. To where is this? Moses. Let me see. I think it's in this one, but let me make sure. That we. Second, one second, because if not, it's a it's a certain verse I want. I can show you where he asked them, but it's a certain verse I want. So that's why I wanted the atonement. That's not the one. And I think this is why. God. Yeah. Okay, I think I found it. One second. Because I wanted I wanted to find a particular spot. Let me make sure that's it. That's not the one. Okay. Cause this right ass. Well, I tell you what, let me find this one. While I'm doing that, let me show you this other one where he asked him, um, where he actually chose them, but I want to show you this other part where he actually selected them. One second. Let's just move here. Hmm.
I wish this thing was faster here. Let's go right here. That's not the one. I'm just having a few little, I'm trying to get this straightened out on my computer too, so I'm just trying to make sure. So one second, I don't know why I keep doing this. Come on. Oh, come on. Ooh, this is gonna make me mad. Let's, well, first let's go over here because this is gonna actually make me upset. Let's go, let's go to Exodus 19. Let's go to Exodus, yeah, let me pull it up. Cause this thing, yeah. Let me, let me, let me still try to get it up. Let me still try to get it up. One second, if I can get this up. If I can, let me see. This is finna actually make me a highly. Can you? I don't even know if y'all can you. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, you can see it. Yes, sir. Ooh, boy. Yeah, I'm sorry. This this next one finna drive me crazy. It's gonna drive me crazy. But it, okay, let's go. Let's go over here. And we'll see, we should start actually at, um, we'll start at verse three. Let's go to verse three. It says, and Moses went up to God and Yahweh called, un called, called unto him out of the mountain saying, if thou should say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. So he's letting you know one is Jacob, two, all of Israel. That's all he was saying. And he said, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Because what he, all that stuff that they did to the Egyptians, he's letting, he letting Moses know and just reminding him all the stuff he done. And he said, how I bear you on the eagle's wings. Actually, I shouldn't have showed this verse because this actually shows some, some words that I want, but that's okay. Shouldn't have showed this verse, but that's okay. <laughs> and it said, brought, and brought you unto myself. Five. Now, therefore, this is your key right here, how he chose us. If you obey my voice indeed, he's telling you clearly, if you obey my voice, this is the most high speaking. And keep my covenant. 
He's telling you clearly. Then, only then, ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. He's clearly telling you. Only then you will become his people. So as you've probably seen some of my teachings, even though they Israel, all is not really Israel. That's why he said that's why they says this. Because you have some people going to do what? They're not going to do this. But he says, if if you obey his voice, <clears throat> you have some people not going to do it. You see that? So that's what's happening. So now we're going to go back through. And we're going to see here. It says, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests in a, in a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, here we go. And Moses came and called the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. You see that? Yes, sir. So he had to relay everything that the Most High told him to all the people. And then he goes on to say, and all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, uh, we will do. That's how we got selected. Because all the things that he said, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people to the Lord. So right then, once he returned those to the Lord, we became married to him. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, yes, yeah, so once we became married to him, that's why we can go into Deuteronomy 28. When we don't do what he tells us what to do, we have a problem. Yes, so that's what happens. So this is why it's really important to where and we know Malachi 3 and 6. Actually, we'll go right there to it. So this is this is why it's so this is why the Bible is so straightforward. And most people don't want to don't want to look at it that way. It's straightforward. When you go right here at Malachi 3 and 6, it says what? For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, which we just seen, it was Jacob, Israel, ye are not consumed. Yes, sir. He don't change. So if he don't change, what is he saying? He's saying what? We have to obey something. We have to obey his voice. Yes, sir. Whatever he says, we obey. That's why he says this. Any other questions? Um, Brother Albert? Yeah. The verse that you uh, just now gave me, can uh -huh. I um, uh, substitute the words? Yeah, you can actually sub you can clearly substitute the words. You can clearly okay. substitute those. <clears throat> um, these these actually can easily be can be substituted. Easily. Yes, sir. And seeing uh, a lot of times, I don't know if you look at all my teaching, a lot of times what I actually do, I use more precepts in a lot of my teachings because I have to show you most people the longer route besides just going through this saying this or this and that because then you have a lot of people who don't understand the spiritual side, you have to explain it. So that's why I do that. That's why you see a lot of times I have a lot of scriptures, a lot of precepts in my, in my teachings because of that because I have to break this down and show them the carnal side, what they see, and slowly enter them into the spiritual side on what it's actually saying. That's why I do that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Do we have um, homework tonight? Actually, what I want you to do is read on Abel, where I took you. And I had another word I did take you through. I just want you to read and understand what Abel was saying. And we wanted to get the understanding on Abel. Because I didn't I didn't go through the understanding on Abel. I went through I went through on everybody else, but I didn't go through on Abel. And I didn't go through another one. I actually gotta go through it because actually I did one I wasn't supposed but I tell you what, and I beep. Brother Elder. Yes. What verse do you read for Abel? For Abel, I want you to go to Genesis four. 
I want you to read that chapter on there. Just read that one chapter, get an understanding on what able is. And on a bead, I want you to understand what a bead means. I'm going to go back to a bead to where we can understand what a bead is actually talking about. And I want you just to read the chapter of a bead. And we can look at, you can, there's plenty of places where you can look at it at. So you see that. But we can go to Exodus 13 and 4, and it says, The day came, the day uh, came ye out of the month a bead. And just want you want to understand just really what a bead means, and then what we're going to do, once you understand what it means, we'll find out what a few of you guys think about it. Once we see what you think about it and how you're seeing it based on that chapter that you're reading, because you'll see a bead as you see in here, you see in Exodus 23. You, somebody might want to might going to read Exodus 23. You can go see it in Exodus 34. But the key thing is you want to catch it in the first mentions. The first time that you see a B mentioned is really the chapter that you want to read. You don't have to read like chapter 13, 14, 15, 16. It's in 13, read chapter 13, 1 to the end of that chapter. But then you might go back and read it again. So say like we're here, what we'll do, say like it starts at 13.4. So you see right here, it starts off saying, in the, in, and it says, and Yahweh spoke unto Moses saying. So we, know, so we know right from this point on, the Most High is going to start talking. That's what it says. It says, sanctify unto me all firstborn whosoever opened up the womb now. It says, whomsoever opened up the womb. What is he saying here? Because he, this is actually celestial talk. It's not telling you terrestrial talk. So we need to know what that means. So once you understand what that means, you understand what other things mean. And then later on, we'll find out what that means. So this is not homework for you, but I just want you to read this. But this is actually saying something else. It says, among the children of Israel brought both, both men and a beast, it is mine. He's letting you know, whoever opened up this womb, whoever opened it up something, among the children of Israel, it belongs to him. He's being point blank on this. Then it goes on to say, it says, and Moses, and Moses said unto the people. So now we know right here in verse 2, the Most High stopped talking. Now Moses is getting ready to talk. He says, remember this day in which ye came out of Egypt out of the house of bondage. He's letting you know exactly what it is. So we, now we do know when we look at Egypt, Egypt is not talking about in the Bible always just Egypt being a good thing. Egypt means, the Bible meaning of, of Egypt means the house of bondage. That is exactly what Egypt means. So now, and then it says, for by the strength of the hand I have brought you out of the place, there shall no uh, leavened bread be eaten. So now he's telling you, can no leavened bread be eaten? So anything with leaven in it cannot be eaten, especially bread. Why? Because what do bread mean? Bread is meat. What is meat? It's spiritual. That's telling you exactly what it is. So it cannot be it cannot be infused with sin because leaven equals sin. Unleaven is not sin. Leaven is sin. And then he says, "What the day ye came out in the month of when of a beeb." So we need to find out what do a beeb mean and why he's saying a beeb. This is what we're going to find out. So as you read this, you can find out what's going on. And then what I want you guys to do, just when it goes down, it has, 20, it has 22 verses. It might take you guys five, six minutes to read it. And you're done. But what I want you to do is think on it, meditate on it, and understand what it's saying. Let me, let me bring them in one second real quick. Uh, one second. Let me see. One second, you guys. Let's 
so we can get her back in because I guess she was doing something, so we had to get one person back in. But but what we want to do is understand. Let me see, did she get in? Did she get back in? Let me send a couple of more, make sure she got in. Um, Well, she has the thing, so I know she has it, so I don't know if she's coming in on that or not. But, but what we want to do is understand what Abib actually means. We got to understand what it means. We need to, um, when you look at it, the same thing what I want you to do is see, see the same word. You look at it, understand how he's making that word, that word function. Because once we understand how he's, how he's making this word function is where we're going to find out what a beep actually means. So when we look at a beep, look at how he's functioning that word, it says they came out in the month of a beep. So we need to understand how he's making that function. But then it, the best part of, of it is from verse 5 on down is telling you how that word functions. So now you're going to see how a beep actually works. This is your key. And then once you understand how it works, think on it. Think on it for a while, see do it make sense. And then once you see if it starts making sense to you, and then you start applying it to the way that you see that it makes sense, and you work it. And now you're gonna start understanding what Abib actually is saying. And then once you tell me what you think, we'll get everybody what they saying what they think it mean. Then from that point, then what we'll start doing We'll start breaking that down and we're gonna find out exactly what it means, but I can almost guarantee you, I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna get it before I even even tell you what it means. I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna get it. So I just need to, you know, you guys read it. The younger, younger ones, I need the parents with the younger ones to read that to them um, to and just read it to them, you know, real slow. And, and main thing, they, they wanna understand what it be mean. And then as it says, and now uh, this day he came out of the month of Eid, and it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, when ye swear unto the, thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou should keep this service in this month. He's telling you how to, he's telling you how it actually functions. That's what we want to understand. So just make sure you go through, understand how that's functioning. Once you understand how it's functioning, I guarantee you know what you know what a beat means, not just in a carnal sense, you'll know what it means in the spiritual sense, because he tells you in the spiritual sense, even what, what it is going on, what what's going on up here. Because the spiritual sense, he's giving it to you, sanctify, sanctify unto me. What do sanctify means? Do anybody know what sanctify means? In, in, this, in, this, in this little Robinson, <laughs> this is a little dangerous six-year-old too. Because <laughs> literally that's what it means. <laughs> uh, so he's telling you to set apart unto him all the firstborn, period. That's what he's saying. So when he says sanctify, you can just say, and basically what it's saying, and it said, and, and Yahweh spoke unto Moses saying, set apart unto me all the firstborn. That's what he's actually saying. Sanctify is what most people see. Set apart is what he's saying, spiritually and then he say unto me all the firstborn whatsoever openeth the womb what is the womb anybody anybody want to take a stab at it
Anybody want to take a stab at it? Because I'm going to tell you, you guys, you guys are pretty sharp. So this is why I'm going that this extra little piece to where we finish this out. So once you read it. So, so what the womb also can be translated to. When you look at the womb, so how it should read is whosoever openeth the matrix is what it's saying. That's what it's letting you know. Among so whom so so it said whomsoever openeth the matrix among the children of Israel, both men and beast, it belongs to him. This is what he's saying. So he's telling you all this spiritually, but watch in verse three, and it says, And Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out of what? You can remove Egypt out of there. You just, just put bondage. You remember this day you came out of bondage. You can drop that whole part out of the house of bondage. But you remember this day when you came out of bondage. For what? For by the strength of the hand of Yahweh who brought you out from this place. Which hand did he use? Do anybody know? Because he tells you all the time what hands he uses. It's the right hand of the Most High. He tells you this all the time. So we want to make sure that we keep remembering that when he's saying certain things, we want to make sure we keep that in mind as we read. So when he's talking about with it, with it, with, with his hand. Also, who is who stands on the right hand of the Most High? Yahweh Shai. That's where his power lays. So he said, then, then, then he tells you what? There shall no leaven be eaten. What? He's saying, ain't no sin going to be taken into this place. No sin knowledge. He do not want nowhere run, running around. This day come ye out of the month of B. <laughs> So, when did they come out of Egypt? He's telling you the month they came out of. He's telling you everything right there. Spiritually, what happened? The month of the Mm-hmm. Month of the Yep. And that actually is a month. And, and we're going to go through, so that's why I want you to read it, and then you guys are going to tell me what you see, and then I want you to be able to tell me when did that happen. Because just like I said, well, let me let me switch the hats. For, for, for you guys' group, anything you want to know about the Most High is in the book. The only thing that's in that's not that you will not find in here is when he's returning. That's in the power of the Most High. It tells you that. So anything else you want to know, he will answer it. See, and actually make sure we're clear on this. Let's go to all, everybody, let's go to Acts. And we're going to find that out right then to where that answer, to where that question that never have to come up. Let's go to Acts first chapter. And we're going to go to verse 6. Acts, the first chapter, and verse 6. In Acts, the first chapter, verse 6, it says, when they, when, they, when they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Which, that's what he's supposed to do. When he comes, he's going to restore the kingdom back to Israel. And he says in verse 7, he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the season. That's not for us to know when he's returning. He goes on more, which the Father had put in his own power. So that's, that's something we should never be, even be asking because his son don't know, so how are we going to know? 
He's standing on the right hand side of the Father. We down here on earth. So he don't know, so clearly he's not going to let us know. But anything else we want to know, he lets us know. Anything that you want to know about, he will share it with you. He has no problem with doing that. So the same thing, so the same thing when people say, when did when did when did Israel come out from, from Egypt? You can actually find out. Because it's in it's in the scriptures. So so with that, um, we don't have no more questions. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna close out. Um and then um you guys have the two ones that, that I want to go through. We're gonna look at a bead, and we are looking at the other word is is um yeah, is is the which one is able? I want to know what those two what those two mean spiritually. We're not going to do too much carnal stuff while we over here because most of the stuff I'm going to be doing over here is spiritually because we're going to look at the spiritual side and the carnal side. And we're going to always hone in on the spiritual side. So those, so those are the ones we're going to want to know. So um. We don't have no more questions. We're going, to, we're going to move forward and then we're going to convene this and pick it up next week. So is everybody good? Okay, so it looks like everybody good. So so the same thing, uh, Devin, I need to get, uh, have your father get with me. I need to get the address to get that out to you. And, um, and the same thing is, um, Everybody, we have a uh, mini gifts going to be going out, and just like that alone, you know, put the effort in, effort comes out of it. And also, those are things to where you don't look to be rewarded on, on, on every time you do something. But the main thing is, it gives you a little bit more to where you can see to where, um, encouragement and happen, especially for the young ones. And the main thing, what we also do, we don't never want them to be looking at other children to where children look at um, the heathen times, which gets into those holidays, which in Christmas and all that, which something is clearly against scripture to where it gets to these times where they don't have to even sit there and it's because one thing is just another day. And as many of us, as we start getting older and they start getting into these holidays and many of us start going into uh, temporary workforce, working part-time, those will be some of the best days to work. And I can tell you that right now because that's where most places will pay you double time, some will pay you triple time, especially in America. I don't, I'm not sure how they might do it in other countries, but I do know here, we will pay double, we will pay triple. And I will not have a problem doing them because it's nothing but another day. And actually most times, it's the evening. And with that, I, I thank everybody for uh, for joining in, all the parents that joined in, and uh, we have a lot of people who watched it, and 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 I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. So I guess next week um, we'll be going through with the same people. We're going to get some understanding, and we'll continue. We're going to try to have a few more, a few more kids in here and to get in here, but other than that, I think you guys did a beautiful job. Do we have any parents might want to say anything before we close out or are we good? Or not just I wanted to say something Yes. Um, that um, it was very good and I learned from each and every one of the kids. Yeah, yeah. Every one of them. I, want, I just wanted to say thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, anybody else? Yes, I would like to tell the young ladies they are beautiful young ladies. And the guys, they are gorgeous young guys. And keep up the good work. Yeah. I am so proud of you guys. Boy, yeah, tell me. I, I, I'm 100% agreeing with you, Sister, uh, Sister Herrera. Okay. Shalom, people. Yes. Yes. Hello? yes. I just wanted to tell the kids they did a very good job. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I would like to say that I'm very proud of the kids yeah. and they, the job they did with the word meat was awesome. Wasn't it? 
Congrats. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. It even when um, Kiki did her presentation, made me get emotional a little bit, <laughs> and especially with my daughter, daughter Kimberly. So yeah. I'm very proud of them. But my man, Devin, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I will tell you, you're going to see it going to always switch because you're going to see where some of them are strongest points. Mm -hmm. You're going to switch from kid to kid. That's normally what happens. You're going to see some kids going to have real strong points and, and then some going to be in other places. But, but man, yeah, these kids is... Um, yes. If you know I'm, that, a, I'm a very proud of Israel right now, the babies. Yeah, because you're going to find out a lot. If you see, I can ask them certain questions. They flip it automatically. They can. They know what it is automatically. So when I ask certain words, they just blurt it out exactly what. Wow. It is. One of them is six years old. Wait, wait. Let me correct it. Six, I saw him. I said, "Oh my God!" Eight, no, we got to correct his eight. Six, mm -hmm. getting ready to be seven. Going on seven. Yeah. Correct. Well, he wanted yes. to that. That be known. He's six. Yes, and we. Oh. Yes, and when he answered the question, sanctified. I was like, "Wow." Yeah, and and he just spit it right out. Yes. So, yeah, but so, so, so we got him six going on seven. So mm -hmm. Make sure we get that correct, because if not, <laughs> we might get on this side and they're gonna get on us. To, <laughs> That's right. Make sure we got all that correct. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I enjoyed the lesson today. It was awesome. Oh, she was. I had a ball. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have anyone? Anyone else? Or are we good? Well, shalom, family, elder. I just wanted to share something with you about Devin. Uh -huh. uh, ever since Elder showed the, is it a tablet? Yeah. And you mentioned the tablet that you were going to give it away. The first thing Devin said was, I'm a get that. Yeah. And that, that was his theory. And he stuck to it. And just a minute ago, he said, yeah, Dad, should we give Elder the phone number? And I said, well, he didn't give it away. He goes, yeah, Dad, I got it. I got it. You know? So I didn't hear that part, but I'm happy for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I need the address because I need to know where to send it because it's Devin's. All right. Well, I'll have Devin send it to you, Elder. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because it's his. Because he said it was his, and it's his. You know, he, 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 really, he, really, he really put in that effort, and the man, he, yeah, he, he, did, he did an outstanding job. I think uh, – yeah, I just, you know, I had to pause him a couple of times because he, he, he literally shot me, you know, so, because I didn't think he would flip it, but he was flipping everything over his flip, uh, spiritually, which is uh, really, really don't catch out of these kids. And, but, but yeah, it's really impressive. Then, you know, you get, you, then you get these little ones just spitting out stuff. They don't even, they just spitting it out. Yeah, sanctify. Oh, no, that means set apart. Yeah, I'm six years old. No, six going on seven. I need to get that correct because I don't need brother to do this and now the kid told you it's going on seven. I don't need to get that. So, <laughs> so but um, yes. Yeah, so I love these kids that, you know, they, they're going up, but then as they understand the Bible, see, the more solid, the more solid you guys' foundation is, the more solid can nobody fool you. And all, I want, all I want you guys to do is read the Bible. And the main thing is you will not have to be investing in some commentary. You won't have to be investing in some, some uh, weird dictionary. You'll be able, to be able to read this Bible and know exactly what it's saying from beginning to the end, and can't nobody turn you from it. Because once y'all get on the precept side of it, it's going to be a wrap at that point. And I'm talking about can't nobody tell you anything because you can show them all the precepts to everything. That's the best part. Yeah. So we have any other parents or, or, or are we good? Uh, but I'm not a parent. Um, oh. I just want to say I, I had to leave. Mm -hmm. But um, I just came back in, so I missed the 